today we're going to discuss about protocol. So what is protocol? Protocol, just by thinking of it, uh, uh, the first thing that came into my mind is that these are the things, uh, the rules and regulations that should be observed and followed by everyone. But for us to better understand it, let us define what protocol is. So protocol refers to accepted rules governing the conduct of diplomats with the foreign ministry, the officials and the public in the host country, other diplomats and international organizations. So in other terms, these are the ceremonies and etiquettes which observed by diplomats and head of states. And according also to uh, Anne Bird, the founder of Protocol and Diplomacy International, Protocol Officers Association, it is a code of correct conduct. It is a code of correct conduct of um, dealing with the dignitaries. So the rules of protocol include the niceties, which is the minor aspect of polite social uh, behavior, the courtesies, and the politeness in oral and written communication. It also includes the uh, attendance in public functions, the day-to-day -day performance of the duties of diplomats. So the rules of protocol is also applied to non-diplomats, such as the government officials, corporate executives, officers and employees, ordinary citizens, and the public in general in dealing with one another. So why is it important to non-diplomats also know should also know uh, the about this protocol so that uh, people it will make it a lot easier to get along because they know what they're expected to do uh, they already have uh, the knowledge when it comes in dealing with them the right way on interacting with them so according to Luis Salcedo Moreno a uh, protocol is a body of ceremonial rules to be observed in all written or personal intercourse between head of different states or their ministries. So, uh, it is really a must to be aware, to know, to have a knowledge regarding this protocol, even if you are a non-diplomat. He talks about um, a proper way, an etiquette, in dealing with them. Hello, my name is Benjamin Donato III. I will discuss the origin of protocol. So, at different periods in the past, protocol was used to refer to um, number one, rolls of paper on which agreement between city states and later nations were recorded. So, on the bilateral agreement between the nation or states, um, the protocols were included. Number two, the agreement itself. So, on those, on the agreement between um, states or nations. And organizations, the protocols were included on the agreement itself. So number three, the main treaty. So the treaty or the concluded agreement between the countries, and those, the protocols were in, also included. So number four, a document supplementing the principal agreement or treaty. So number five, the official minutes of an international conference signed by participants. So when we say official minutes, so this is the written form of the meeting or a hearing or an assembly. So it is to be signed by the participants. So number six, it also the protocols, it lays down the styles and the sty title of the states, their head and public ministers. Lastly, it indicates the form and courtesy to be observed in all international acts. Thank you. sources of protocol. So, as we all know, when we hear the word protocol, it is an official process on regulating rules on diplomatic conference. So, basically, it is a code of conduct or a code of right and correct conduct. So, let's have the first one. We have local customs, laws and regulations, traditions, scholarly works, treaties, international agreements, and so on. So, let's discuss first the local customs and traditions. And when we hear the word local customs, it's just something similar to tradition, I think. Because um, because local customs means nakaugalian na. In Tagalog, nakaugalian na siya. So, um, um, I think a lot, of, a lot of people exercising 
um, exercising a common practice um, based on what beliefs they believe on. And so next, next one, we have the laws and regulation. So of course, as a rule, diplomatic protocol service is always placed within the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So the purpose of it is to make sure that the diplomatic representatives receive um, proper treatment in the successful development of in the successful development of international relations. So let's have the scholarly works. So example is from the United States, former President Barack Obama's former ambassador Capricia Marshall, she wrote a book and her book is titled um, Protocol, The Power of Diplomacy and How to Make it Work for You. So I think this scholarly works is just something um, a written document or written works of a former diplomat or a former ambassador who makes a references, um, um, a recommendation and advices um, and, it, and it has a content of informative about protocol to influence as well the future diplomats and hopefully this future dip, hopefully this new diplomats should adapt and learn from that or learn from it and they should be able to apply a new tactics or techniques on how to improve or develop the current system of the, of the diplomatic protocol. So next we have treaties. So obviously, as we all know, um, treaties is a formally and ratified agreement between independent countries, just like international agreement. So we let's have the international agreement. We have Congress of Vienna, Congress of Arts La Chapel, we have Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations, Consular Relations, and Org and international organizations so overall they obviously they're all international treaty or international agreement that defines um, that defines a framework from diplomatic relations and regulating um, and regulating treaties between independent states so as we all know um, the state is the primary actor of international relations so this all international agreement um, states have automatically a validity to join or participate to that so because they have ILP which stands for international legal personality and it is in it defines um, a status of um, having rights in any international agreement so states of automatically join to that international agreement therefore therefore so therefore um, diplomatic protocol is the sum of rules of conduct of official representatives of states and international organization in the exercise of diplomatic function in the international relation. That's all. Alright, so I am going to discuss the importance of protocol in a diplomatic Practice. So as we all know that these protocols are the forms of um, ceremony and etiquette observed by diplomats as well as the head of state. It is also a code of conduct. So we're going to tackle about some of the importance of protocol. So number one, it regulates contacts between nations and their representatives because these protocols controls uh, contacts between nations because there is a certain rules that must be followed and observed. It facilitates cordial relation among nations by observing rules of conduct based on the principle of give and take. So it makes a lot easier for people and for the representative to get along because they know what to expect and it will result to friendly and peaceful relation as it avoids delay and it ensure maximum efficiency because if you're educated enough on how to deal with this high level officials diplomatically is you would be able to have an effective mission as it uh, minimizes frictions and confusion and as well as chaos it also promotes mutual respect for each other's right. So, uh, being on a mission, you really need to be culturally sensitive or to develop cultural sensitivity for your mission to be uh, and to run very well for your mission to be successful. Now, it also provides guidance through experience of 
others. It resolves disputes concerning privileges and immunities of persons entitled to them. And number nine, it guarantees free exercise of rights and privileges by those entitled to them. And number 10, it clarifies the liabilities of those who did not observe the rules. So aside from an excellent conflict resolutions, negotiation strategies, you really need to be particular also with the communication skills, both the verbal and non-verbal communication, specifically the body language. You really need to be particular with that. So you really need to know where they're coming from. So um, diplomatic protocols um, is really not measurable. It's immeasurable. So you really need to understand the culture because if you don't understand other people's culture, they are less likely to do business with you. So you really need to um, execute or possess these three um, major uh, guiding principles on a diplomatic mission. So number one is the courtesy, number two is the common sense, and number three, the cooperation. So you really need to be honorable. So um, overall, protocol is an important part of a diplomatic mission because it is linked with history, royalty, religion, culture, as well as the language. So as of what I have said, this protocol involves etiquette on a local and an international scale and the practice of good manners on a daily basis. So today it is particularly important not only because it covers the ceremonial rules that are followed during the official functions and how to behave on this special occasion but it also provides sets of established rules of um, courteousness that are need to be respected in a society. So that would be all for the importance of protocol. Thank you. Since now we know what protocol is, its importance and its origin and the sources of it, now I'll give you a little preview about the applications of protocols. First is in posture. Posture is how you stand, how you sit, and how you walk in a social gathering. It is important because it shows um, your first impressions, how you gracefully walk, how you stand straight, or how you properly sit. Next is names. Names is how you address someone you're talking to. If it is in first name, last name, or, and also the title you are going to use. Next is introduction. Introduction is the beginning of any social interaction. There are rules that you should follow in introducing yourself and also listening to someone introducing themselves. Next is handshake. Handshake is also important as introduction in social gathering because it gives more personal relationship with someone you're talking to. You can make handshake in the beginning of a meeting or gathering and also at the end as saying goodbye and if someone offers handshake, you should do handshake. Next is greetings. Greetings is just short acknowledgement to the person you are talking to like how are you? How are you doing? And have a nice day. Next is conversation. Conversation is the actual exchange of words between two people. It involves not just speaking by, but also listening. There's also protocol in making business cards and calling cards. In calling cards, you should only put your name and your title. And while in business cards you should put your name your title and your address and contact number there are also rules in giving calling cards or business cards and receiving them next is precedence precedence is the priority of place based on the superiority of ranks it is observed by people of different ranks next is signing of a treaty in signing of a treaty there's a specific 
space that you should put your signature. Next is in social entertainment. Why do we entertain? We entertain to give um, maximum pleasure of entertainment to one's guest. And also, there is protocol of Philippine Foreign Service.